Well, good morning, everybody. It's bright and early, although not quite as early as my old breakfast time days. <laughs> but it's lovely to see you here, and thank you for coming towards the front, because we need a little bit of intimacy in a spiritual and a psychic sense. But we also want a little bit of interactivity here. So what I've got is, because I work on my meditation and mindfulness with colour, which has always been my thing, which is probably why I'm wearing this, because I go very much on colour. And you won't disturb me or indeed anyone else. I'm going to put this book here and crayons. Every colour. And I want you to just come in your own time. If you don't want to come at all, you don't have to. And I want you to find somewhere in this book, and I want you to colour a little bit in. But more importantly, I want you to look at the colour that you have chosen. And at the back of the book, you'll find every colour, and why did you choose that colour? So you have magentas and greens and indigos and greys and all kinds of various and varying colours. So I would love you, in your own time, to come up. I'm not sure the table's going to be big enough. And probably knowing me, and with Mercury retrograde, you're going to find everything will hurtle onto the floor. <laughs> but if that's meant to be, let's let it be. So how did I get into meditation and mindfulness? Many, many reasons, and we haven't got a very, very long time. But when I was a child, one of the things that I was always connected to was colour. And I used to go into my bedroom in a little village, as it was then, Harefield in Middlesex. I was born in Hillingdon. My mother and father moved to a little council flat, brand new then, in about 1954, and I used to go into my back room and I used to sit and I used to think. Now, I didn't know at that time in 1950, well, about 56, we moved there in 1954, I was too young in 1954 to sit and think. But basically, around about the age of seven or eight, so in the 50s, I used to go into the room and I used to sit and I used to think. And I was a head choir boy in a very beautiful church, St. Mary the Virgin in Harefield, a Saxon and Norman church. And for someone of my age, even though I was the head choir boy there, to be sat at the back of the pews with no one else in the church, sitting and thinking, a lot of people found me odd and weird. And I think that probably is the same now I'm 68. <laughs> but nonetheless, it was a very important time for me, very close to my grandmothers, a mother and father who were divorcing. And it was a time of chaos around me. I then, at the age of 14, joined a psychic circle in Rainers Lane, also in Middlesex. And I remember sitting in this big circle and a wonderful medium whose name was Rennie Hindle. She's gone on before us. And Rennie would have us sat in circles and she would just turn the lights down. We had candlelight. And she would say to me and all the other people in the circle, sit there. Let your mind go completely blank and see what comes in. Now, that's not quite the same as meditation, but it, it was the ability to be in touch with my inner self, and we were all in touch with our inner selves. And the symbolism that used to come through in many ways was remarkable. One in particular was I kept picking up psychically, with this blank mind, and I used to, in fact, I could do it now, I could probably go off to sleep now, rather than 
That was the danger. You became so relaxed that you wanted to sleep. But you had to keep yourself going. But the peace and the tranquility. And one symbolism I had was of a poodle whose hair was being cut. And I could see it. I could see the scissors and everything. Where's this coming from? And at the end of that particular psychic circle, we had to give out what we had picked up. And it turned out that the lady opposite came from Acton, and she was a poodle trimmer. And that set me off on a road of spirituality, on the psychic side, so that I even with my astrology, would choose intuition above science. The art of astrology is in the interpretation. And the science is in the calculation. As time went on, and I'll skip a lot of my life, my grandmother suffered with Alzheimer's. And I became her carer for nine years. And this is what introduced me then to meditation. I would find one hour every day, because if you've ever cared for somebody with dementia and Alzheimer's, and this is the late 1980s and early 1990s, there was no help. There was no support. And the support and the help came from people around my grandmother, who we loved so much that we gave everything we could. But I came up with a mantra which was, who takes care of the carer? Because the carer themselves are the one who suffers. And it was then that I realized that I needed to find time for myself to regenerate to be able to find something inside where I could concentrate on the moment, not what had been or not what was to come. And that's when then I hit on colour. The chakra, moving from the purples and the silvers and the turquoises all the way down the body to the reds and the oranges. And I would find that time and with crystals, and I'm now going to pass this little crystal quartz round. I'd like you all to feel it and touch it. Crystal qu quartz is great for stabilizing, for energizing, and clear thinking. So I would like to pass this round. If you don't want to touch it, don't worry, just move it on. Can I give it to you? Just to feel it and to touch it and to work it. And... I have a fluorite here which disperses negative energy and stress. It is very stressful coming in here and talking to you all. I don't mean that in a negative way, but it's being able to tell you everything so that you understand it and can find something for yourself. Because as a double Aquarian, the important thing for me is that you should individualize what it is that you need within yourself to find that peace, that security, that stability, and the ability to be able to carry on the next part of your life, your day, the hour to come. But at that time, I would concentrate on what I needed now and what was happening in that moment. And I found it so useful to me. It, it, was, it, was, uh, it was a security. It was that chance for me to re rebuild my strength and energy so that I can move on to the next move, the next part of my life. The next part of my life was when my grandmother passed over and two or three years later, I went into a severe depression. And the depression came because when you've looked after somebody for so long, and they're no longer there, you don't really know what to do with your life. The routine has gone. Everything has changed. I ballooned up to 13 stone, in, 30 stone in weight. 
I had two heart scares. Now, I don't want this to be an ah moment. This is not pantomime. But at the same time, I knew I needed to recenter myself and to find myself again. And one of the things I asked myself on January the 5th in 2009 was, what is it that you're missing in your life? And for me, I realized that I was no longer using color. I was no longer meditating. I was no longer using that part of my day for myself. So I regrouped. And I think you'll all find that sometime in your lives you go out of kilter. You lose your way. The path isn't clear. Confusion reigns. And it helped me to go back to my routine of that hour for myself. And by finding that hour for myself, I was then able to move on to the next part of my life, which was actually Strictly Come Dancing. Now, when I did Strictly Come Dancing, I turned it down, simply because I thought it would be too much for me. I was 60 years old. My health wasn't particularly good. But everyone said to me, you've got to do it. And that was in 2011. And one of the things I found particularly difficult during that time was self-belief, confidence, and being able to do all of the things that I've always wanted to do, but basically scared. I was so scared that I was going to make a fool of myself and didn't know what to do. And I was very lucky in that I met a wonderful partner in a lady called Flavia Kakachi. And Flavia's a Piscean. And I know, going into a little bit of astrology, with Venus and Mars and Jupiter in Pisces, if I connected with another Pisces, it would bring out the best in me. And this little fluorite went round every member of the cast, all the dancers, because we were all so nervous. But every time before I danced, I would sit down. I'll try and do it here. Maybe you'd like to join me. Let's not go for the light. Let's go for the... If you'd like to close your eyes. Bring your hand, your palms up. And I would just like you to think of this moment... Now, in an individual way, I'd like you to consider a color that is important to you or that you are drawn to. It doesn't matter what the color is. I'd like to you to concentrate on your breathing in and out, but I'd love you to keep that color right into the center of your mind. Keep that color. Feel it growing round you like an aura, like a halo. Push away any anxieties or worries or cares. And just let that color embrace you. Give you warmth. Feel the light of that color. Coursing through your veins and all around.
feel the calm and the peace and the solitude. when you feel you want to come back into this room, please do. On a series last year on health, which was called 100 Years Younger, ITV sent um, eight of us to Sardinia. And one of the celebrities, I don't know if you know her, many of you probably will, Sherry Hewson. Sherry has been in television and films and movies for many, many years. She was um, in a a state of anxiety and doubt. And Bill Roach, many of you may know from Coronation Street, but he leads many meditations. And I've known Bill for many years, and he led a few meditations when we did the program. And Bill had to go back, because he was filming on Coronation Street, and they asked me to lead a meditation for Sherry because the uh, medical people said it would help her. Well, I'd never really done anything like this on telly before. It had been very much a thing for me. The fact that I'm here today talking about this is probably why I feel so stressed is because I think this is a very personal thing. And the... And, and it's personal to you and how you wish to use this. But I took Sherry through three, I wouldn't necessarily say meditations, but certainly mindfulness exercises. We did an, what I would call a psychic meditation, in other words, sensory, to connect with the senses. And... It was in a very beautiful location. I think you can still see it online. And in the long run, the premise of the show was that you should l lose 100 years. Well, we thought that was 100 years each, actually. It was 100 years, all of us together, which was a kind of a few moment. Um, and... We lost, I think, 140 years, all told. But the interesting thing was doing the colour meditations, mindfulness exercises with Sherry, she lost a number of years. I think it was 20 years, all told. And she turned to me and she said, the reason I've lost these years um, is because the doctor... Um, Ian, I remember his name was Ian from Edinburgh University, said, you've lost these 20 years because of what you did with Russell. Now, I did nothing except a much longer version of what we've just done, a much longer version of that peace and quiet. I still feel that the secret weapon is colour. I mean, I look around you now, I see this beautiful lilac scarf of yours, the greens behind you, your fabulous pink hair, the yellows like a, 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 a ley line running through here. And for me, kind of look at that magenta and cerise. We have a red corner here. Can you see how sensory, how it heightens the senses, and it's about colour? And when you can feel the colour and the right colour, when you go to your wardrobe and say, what shall I wear today? 
you must be drawn to something because your psyche is drawing you in and saying, wear this. And so you are taking a spiritual connection with you through the day. And if you feel that by one o'clock you need to change colour, then stick something else, a tie or a scarf in your bag. Because that colour will help. Now in my area, blue is always the colour of healing. And to wear blue, therefore, heightens your healing powers and powers of recovery. And it always amazed me that when I wrote this book, which was really for dementia, people with dementia and their carers, because I noticed when I went to some of the wards, I live in Snowdonia, and Snowdonia for me is a piece of great, one, well, tremendous tranquility. I think I always saw myself as Heidi on top of the Alps. <laughs> I couldn't get to Switzerland, so I decided in the end to go to North Wales, just as good. And I'm very near a beautiful village called Port Marion. And I would sit there, look at the mountains, look at the sea, look at the water, and I would wear the colours. If the colours weren't there, I would bring the colours with me. So one of the things that I noticed is that when I went to some of the dementia wards, the people who suffered with this, including my old grandmother, used to love to cut things out. Um, although you should be careful with the scissors. I feel like Blue Peter now. Um, but basically the colours, they would use crayons to colour in. And what I could never understand with adult colouring books is that I never found one that would tell you about what the colours mean. Because the colours mean so much. The colours that you're using, you're wearing, that you paint your bedroom in, your lounge in, your kitchen in, the colour of the car that you buy, all of these things mean so much more. And that's why if you can find that moment of peace and calm for one hour every day, but choose your colour well. I mean, even those lovely pink bands you're all wearing, look, shocking pink, beautiful, a wonderful colour, full of love and vibrancy and just a little bit of passion, even though it's on your wrist. It will still come through because the colours mean absolutely everything. And that moment, I, I like candlelight, I like candle power. And I know a lot of people are kind of worried about meditation, mindfulness, having some kind of religious connotation, or even being paganistic. No, candle power and crystal power from the earth. And so that's why it's an individual thing. It's an individual exercise. It's that moment of creation with yourself. It's that hour that you owe yourself. No matter what time of day it is, give yourself something back. Because by doing that, you center yourself and you are able to Carry on to the next part of your day, your life, your future. But for that one moment, live in the present and allow the colours to come in. Another thing I, I found through my depression was that I became totally overwhelmed by the smallest things. I've got to buy a stamp today. I've got to do this for my mum. I've got to do that for my dad. I've got to write these stars for the paper. I've got to go and oh, so many things. And they crowd in on you. And one of the things I found with my special hour was that I realized when I came out of that moment, that one hour with myself, taking one thing at a time is so important. You've got to buy a stamp, obsess about the stamp. 
but don't obsess about everything else. Because one of the things about depression is that everything comes in and you obsess about everything and you get nothing done. And it's that obsession, that compulsion, that in the end can drive you into such negativity that you postpone everything. That you would get like me and so many other people that you go to bed early because you know that by falling asleep, the rest of the day is gone and oblivion reigns. But you still wake up with the same worries and the same fears and the same anxieties and the same doubts. Because you go to bed early, because you can sleep your worries away, doesn't mean they disappear. And that's why it's important to take one thing at a time. And by doing that, you'll cope with everything. I'm going to take some questions now. Excuse my voice. It's probably the air conditioning. And also, talking with you all. What's up, my timings out there? Excuse me. Ten minutes? Perfect. So I've spoken for half an hour. Far too long. I need to hear what you would like to ask me. And... Um, Lady here. It's a no, it's about the energy because this fluorite went round the whole of the strictly yeah. cast. And none of us would have danced, I'm pretty sure, without it. No, I jest. Basically what it does is it takes away that energy. Um Certainly, I will have private crystals, the ones I will use for my hour. I have amethysts. I particularly love amethysts because of the balance and the calm that they can bring. Amethysts used to be used in ancient times, ancient Grecian times. They were popped into a drink, and if there was poison in the drink, the, am the amethyst would yell, don't drink this. Um, but yes, I mean... I, I have my private crystals, but my fluorite and the little quartz going around, that's fine. I think it's good. It's collective. It's this collective energy. But the one thing that I do for that hour is on my own. But as an Aquarian, I've always wanted to reach out. You know, my uh, raison d'etre now is not so much my astrology, or uh, my theatre work or anything, it's working with Alzheimer's and dementia. It's trying to find a cure. And if that one hour can give me the strength to move to the next phase, and that's why I use it, you know. So have your private crystals, but never be afraid to share the energy. You may be doing someone a very great favour. Wherever you want to go, darling, I'm going to leave you to choose, and that way I won't get into trouble. Thank you, Russell. I, I feel so moved and touched by your sharing. It was a real privilege. Oh, that's kind of you. I want to say how much I admire your fashion. Uh, thank you. Today of all days, you look magnificent in purple. So my question is, <laughs> what does purple signify for you? A great spirituality. It's one of the colours um, that is one of the highest colours of psychic and intuitive energy. I got this. I watched a programme. Have you ever seen a programme on television called Our Island Parish? Which I really love. I love that kind of bucolic going back to um, one's roots. And there was um, Our Island Parish on Fair Isle. If you can download it on, I think it was BBC Four. And I saw a lovely lady there who had so much love for all the colours of wool that I actually wrote to Fair Isle um, and got a letter back. I should have, of course, gone online, but I didn't. I love writing. One of my hobbies, by the way, is calligraphy because I can find great creativity through writing. And um, I said to her, I need all of these colours. She said, perfect, no one's ever asked for all of those together. I think um, they all go a bit Burberry, the men, she said. The, all those Burberry colours, and that's how I got this. So purple for me, I wear it a lot on television, 
It calms me. I find tranquility within it. And I just love, uh, and with blues, which is the healing color as well, these are my two favorite colors. And I bring cool greens into my kitchen because otherwise it can get overheated. Hi there, Russell. Hello, darling. Um, I really want to do more around meditation and mindfulness, but every time I sit down, um, my brain just gets completely full of stuff that I don't want to be thinking about, no. so then I end up giving up. I'm sure you've had those kind of challenges totally. over time. How, how do yeah. you deal with that, and how do you empty your mind and, and get the benefit from Well, to be honest with you, colour is the cheat, because when Rennie Hindle, when I used to do psychic stuff, um, psychic development, I used to sit there and she wanted us all to put our minds blank and see black. I never could see black. I only ever saw colour. And I think the important thing is to choose your colour well. And if you find it hard to see it in your brain, go and get a very cheap, low, they're WH Smiths. Um, you can get from anywhere, get a lovely spectrum of colours. And look at one of those colours before you go into your, your hour of, for yourself, or however long you, it doesn't have to be, I use an hour, but you may want to use a, a certain amount of time. Choose the colour first, hold that pencil, you don't have to shut your eyes for your mind, but let's look at that colour, go into that colour. What I don't want you to do is for your brain to wander off that colour and into your dramas you know, and it's so easy that you will become distracted by those things that we are purposely wanting to live for that moment, that moment in time when it's all for you. So for some, I mean, the other day, for instance, I put on a pair of the brightest red, yellow socks, and someone said to me, why are you wearing those? Because <laughs> they know I'm not really a red person, but that day I needed red. And I needed red because I was going to do my 10,000 steps. And I needed that energy that I knew red could bring me. And it put a spring in my step. The rest of me was still blues and purples, but I had red socks. Choose your color well. And that's why those colors, whatever one, are so important. I asked the decorator the other week, to paint my study, I was away, and I will never make this mistake again. I said, I want a lovely lavender blue, a hyacinth blue. Have you got any here? I'll soon see it. Um, and when I came back, somebody had painted, well, somebody, the decorators, who hadn't run it past me, had painted it grape. Oh. Grape? <laughs> and it was called grape. I said, this looks like grape. <laughs> and when I looked at it, it actually said, Grape. <laughs> well, the last thing I could ever write in that room and do my calligraphy is to grape. So they've got to come back. But that's how important colour is. Does anybody else identify with me about colour here? Many of you. Um, and that's why I say it's all very much about individuality. How you do these things. I don't believe that there are set or golden rules, except that we know the one golden rule is to get rid of the rubbish, push it out, bring color in, be positive, and then you can, you can carry on and move on. Take one thing at a time. I have five minutes. A lady in red. Thank that. you. Um, the colour that I chose was actually your sort of purpley colour. And I, I, I love the colour, but I don't know if I was influenced by what you were wearing. So I'm wondering if a lot of us here in the room might have chosen purple, or are there particular colours that are very popular? No, I think it's back to individuality. I it mean would be interesting to see a show of hands, maybe, to see how differently we chose in the room. Well, there's lots of reds. I mean, Rachel here has even dyed her hair that colour. <laughs> um, and we need to know why, perhaps not. Um, but, um, uh, but it, you know, you've only got to look around. Our ley line of yellow, another lovely yellowy mustard going on up here, some lovely reds. 
So, in, in other words, it all depends. I mean, this is why sometimes uniforms are very difficult. Because when you're wearing a uniform, you're not being an individual, you're being corporate. And that's why maybe you need to stick something in your handbag or your purse or your wallet that you can just pull out. I have, for instance, in my wallet, I have some um, little, um, what do they call them when they've got color on them? Um, swatches. And so one of my favorite colors is jade green. And I know I need jade green when I need to calm down. I whip it out. Not that I'm in a uniform very much, but, you know. So I think everyone would just choose accordingly. Have I got time? This lady here has been so patient. Thank you. Hi. Um, I was just curious to see if you, uh, because you, you talked about having one hour a day for mm -hmm. yourself. Um, and I completely relate to that. So I was just wondering if you'd be so kind to maybe share with us what your hour per day maybe looks like. When I, I do my a specific routine for meditation or mindfulness or anything you could share Being an us. Aquarian, it can be a little bit unpredictable, but it, just as a kind of a general rule, rules and Aquarians don't necessarily go together. Um, but basically, I would light a candle. That's very important to me. Um, and the candle would normally be, it's normally lavender. I love the smell of lavender. I go very much on herbs. Herbs are very important to me. Smells, all sensory stuff with me. So that first five, ten minutes is just breathing in the beautiful smells, um, the lavender colours. I also have a great love of bergamot, or is it bergamot? Anyway, whatever it is, I love it. Um, and um, I hate Earl Grey tea, but I love mer bergamot. <laughs> so I buy those very, those organic um, essences that you can get from many organic health shops. So I've got the lavenders, the bergamots, mot, um, and I will use that. So I've also got a little incense burner. I'm particularly, in fact, I'm wearing a, um, today um, a um, perfume from Liberty's called Incense because I love the smell of frankincense. I just think it is the most magical smell. And I wear that normally when I know I'm going to be overly stressed. <laughs> but you've, you've all been so very kind. I could have perhaps worn Blenheim bouquet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which is a very beautiful smell, Blenheim Bouquet from Penn Halligans. But um, everything for me, are you noticing colour, smells, candles? Um, and then I would go in, I would just sit there. Um, phone goes off, but my phone goes off at 8 o'clock every night. Don't try and call me. And it goes off from 8 and does not come back on again till 9 o'clock in the morning. Phones, computers, iPads, everything are out of my life overnight. I will not have them encroach on me at all, which helps me sleep. Perfect place to say that. I'm sure a lot of the sleep experts, my time is out. Um, but basically, with just when I'm talking about sleep, um, and I will just, I will breathe, um, I won't have music on. Music is a distraction. I will find my colour. What colour am I going to use today? And then basically, I will concentrate on that colour. I will smell the lavenders or the particular perfume or scent or herb I've used. And, um, and I will take it through. And it's very strange, you know, normally. A bit like today. I spoke for 30 minutes, there were no things going up or anything, and I knew I had 10 minutes left. It's what your body needs. Thank you all so much for coming. I wish you a wonderful day. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, as you leave the room, if you could bring any rubbish with you, we have rubbish bags here to collect it. Thank you.